So welcome to the afternoon of the second day of this conference in celebration of Joseph Bernstein. Our speaker, first speaker this afternoon is uh, Braverman, uh, who will talk about Coulomb branches of three and four dimensional gauge theories and representation theory. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I'm of course uh, very pleased to uh, uh, speak at this conference. Unfortunately, Joseph is not here, so <laughs> but that's that's okay. So I uh, so I actually decided to slightly change uh, 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 the structure of the talk. So instead of uh, uh, so I was originally uh, planning to talk about some series of work of uh, myself with Finkelberg and Nakajima, uh, and uh, I'll probably going to get to that maybe in the very very end. And uh, uh, most of the time, I'm going to talk about sort of motivations for this work. So, uh, so I'm kind of, uh, so I'm going to talk about motivations for joint works with Finkelberg and the Kajima about the Coulomb branches, and uh, so. And the motivations I'm going to talk about, they'll be kind of three motivations. So they'll be kind of motivation number zero, uh, uh, motivation number one, <coughs> and motivation number two, which are, of course, uh, not uh, unrelated. So motivation number zero will be sort of, uh, I would say, personal motivation. Uh, uh, and this was kind of, for me, but, you know, this personal motivation will have some mathematical uh, meaning. Uh, uh, and uh, motivation number one, uh, and this is what has to do with the title, is the uh, sort of physics motivation. And motivation number two is a kind of uh, well, let me actually a little bit uh, uh, elaborate from uh, I'll just, well, I'll just say the words, which somehow are not supposed to mean anything at this stage. And the words, uh, this uh, uh, physics motivation com comes from studying three dimensional and super theories. And motivation number two is a kind of mathematics. Uh, motivation, and which is actually going to contain motivation number zero, but for me really zero was kind of, so I'll talk what zero is in a moment. Uh, uh, and uh, this was, and zero is going to be sort of part of two, and uh, here the, the relevant words are symplectic duality. Okay, so, so these are the motivations I want to talk about. And so, I mean, it's motivation for what? For, uh, it's going to be motivation for, for a construction of certain objects. And uh, uh, so I'll explain what kind of objects we're constructing and sort of this part will be why. Okay. So let me start with zero. So uh, the, uh, I mean, I really want to start with it because for me that was the main reason for entering this business. But somehow mm, uh, the zero part, I'm going to unravel it later. But at the, at the very beginning, it might seem a little technical. So I'm just, again, I'm just going to say the words. If you're not comfortable with those words, uh, it's fine. So I'm going to later actually give all the definitions. But um, so uh, what this part zero is about is the following. So somehow what for me was puzzling for Sometimes is the following. So suppose that let's suppose that we have G, which is a complex, uh, simple or semi-simple Lie algebra. Uh, Lie algebra. Let's say simply laced. So it's let's say ADE type. Uh, then uh, finite dimensional representations. of G appear in algebraic geometry have 
geometric constructions uh, uh, well have they have sort of two no two well known geometric constructions so appear let me say in algebraic geometry at least in two ways so one is through what is called Nakajima quiver varieties and later on during the talk I'm actually go going to give a definition of the Kajima quiver varieties, at least a certain version of the Kajima quiver varieties. And another is, again, at this stage, you don't have to understand all the words I'm talking about, is through uh, what is called geometric Sataki equivalence. Which is, of course, a starting point for things like geometric Langdon's correspondence and so on. And so, part of the data, part of the package of geometric static equivalence is that you construct fine-dimensional representations of simple Lie algebras. In that case, not necessarily simply Lie type, by just uh, well, by realizing them in certain cohomology. Again, later on, I'm going to I'm going to recall at least part of that construction. And uh, so, if there is one thing I learned from Joseph, so maybe I should have learned me, uh, uh, much more from him, but one thing that I learned from him is that uh, in mathematics, nothing is accidental. So somehow, if you have two nice constructions of the same thing, that it should be, from a certain point of view, it should be the same construction. So, and the question is, so how to, what is the, what is the theory, so to say, which uh, says that these two things are kind of the same. No, barrel well bot is, uh, it's, well, okay, I should say that it's, by geometric, I mean, well, maybe geometric, um, well, uh, 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 I mean by, uh, so, okay, so maybe I, sh I should, should have said it more precisely. So they appear as some kind of cohomology, but not as coherent cohomology, but as uh, sort of some kind of cohomology of constructible sheaves or things like this. So, so somehow, as some, as kind of to, algebra, algebraic geometry, let me say, algebraic geometry, just less topology. No, but the variable fail somehow is not, no, no, it's, it's not part of that. Uh, and uh, uh, so, okay. So this is the motivation number zero. So somehow, um, what, I mean, I'll, I'll try to structure my talk so that at the end, I'm going to, you know, at least tell you something about this. Uh, uh, so, so nowadays, there, there is some kind of, Partly developed theory, which sort of relates, which sort of, which is much more general than this, which in particular relates these two things. But unfortunately, this theory is largely conjectural. Although it's not, it's not only conjectures. It's just uh, well, there's some constructions from theorems and so on. Okay, so this was again. So this is the personal motivation part. So now I can completely forget about it. So let me talk about physics motivation. So now, uh, of course, when we talk about physics motivation, then at the beginning we need to say some words. And uh, these words somehow mean absolutely nothing mathematically, uh, uh, but somehow, uh, 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 but on, first of all, they're nice words, and sometimes, and, and, and actually, uh, they, they do provide you. Uh, actually, in the end, somehow, some kind of mathematical you can extract some kind of mathematical quantum from it. So, so part one is this um, supersymmetric gauge theory. So, uh, so physics started this. Uh, okay, so so this is kind of absolutely. Uh, unclear object, three, uh, three dimensional, well, n equal force of a symmetric quantum, what's the main point, gauge theory. So classically, people, uh, uh, physicists can start some, can start some Lagrangian, for instance, and actually, well, even not always, so somehow some, they even started some theories which you cannot write by Lagrangian, so even classic, classically it's not clear what the theory is, but, uh, so, but they do study some kind of realm of quantum field theories, so it's not clear what it means. Uh, the only thing which is clear, so well, there are several things which you can extract mathematically from what they say. One of those things is that it's generally it's difficult to classify those theories, but at least there is some mathematical data out of which you're supposed to be able to produce such a theory. So uh, it's, not, it's not exhaustive, so somehow there are some interesting theories which do not come in this way. But uh, at least, uh, so this uh, data, sh you should be able to produce one to produce one from the following data, from 
the following very simple mathematical data from, the, from a pair G comma, let me denote it by M, where G is a, let's say, complex reductive group. It can be a torus, for example, it's already an interesting case. And M is a symplectic representation of G. So it's just a, it's just a linear representation which has a, which has a symplectic form, so G, G just goes into the point symplectic representation. And just let me uh, uh, say from the very beginning that having a symplectic representation uh, uh, is, not a, is not an exotic thing. So there are a lot of those. For example, one way to produce such representations is the following. And in fact, I'm only going to talk about uh, uh, these examples. You see, uh, uh, let uh, N be any representation of G. I mean, fine, dimens fine dimensional. Algebraic representation. Uh, be any, again, fine dimensional representation of G. Uh, then you can take M to be N plus N star. So we denote them by M and N for some kind of historical reasons, but I'm already used to this notation, so which is definitely not a very good notation, but. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, but uh, I kind of got used to it. And of course, this is symplectic, so uh, for example, you can think about it as a cotangent bundle to M. So it has a natural symplectic form. So, of course, not all symplectic representations come in this way. For instance, we can take G to be SL2 and take the two dimensional representations. So, obviously, symplectic is not of this form. And uh, also, somehow, if you have uh, if you're given M, even if, if it has such a decomposition, it, it may have several such decompositions. Uh, so, and things that should be kind of canonically attached really to M and not to N, but somehow uh, in the end we'll be working with this kind of representation N rather than M. This is just because our construction has some <laughs> drawbacks. Um, okay, uh, so that's one thing that mm, should be noted that this is this kind of unclear thing which is called, uh, uh, which is called this quantum field theory. It's a, a three-dimensional equal force of semantic gauge theory. And you're supposed to be able to construct it out of this data. Now, uh, other things that people study in this, uh, uh, what thesis study in this theory, they started some, <coughs> given such a theory, they study the corresponding modular space of vacuum, some, which is some space. So somehow thesis tells you it should be some space M, which is the modular space of vacuum. And uh, uh, which is again, it's not clear what it is. Uh, even for thesis, it's not really clear what it is. But they produce some kind of two pieces inside this modular space, uh, and uh, uh, which, which are kind of understandable. And uh, the two pieces are called. Um, so is it visible if I write here? So the two pieces are called. So I denote them one by m sub h, and this is called the Higgs branch of the modular space of vacuum. Of vacua. Higgs branch. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry? Yes. And. Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, and the Coulomb branch. So again, these words just will remain, for the remainder of the story, they will just remain as words. So somehow I will not say anything about either Higgs or Coulomb. Uh, but somehow, uh, but the point is uh, that what they tell you is that this, uh, they tell us something about this MH and MH. So first of all, MH and MC should actually be, well, a thesis would say that they're hyperkeller manifolds, but somehow I'm, I'm going to kind of suppress this, so I'm going to stay in the kind of algebraic realm. And they're supposed to be, in fact, they're supposed to be, well, I'm going to say something more precise in thesis, of course, saying, but in fact, what these things will be, they'll be affine, uh, 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 well, you put single symplectic uh, varieties. Over C. Now, single symplectic, this is actually uh, uh, a rigorous notion 
for this in uh, 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 due to Baville, but I'm not going to even appeal to this. So what I will mean by this, I will mean that they, they have, well, they're fine, so they just spectrum some algebras on, and they, they should be Poisson varieties, so this algebra should have a Poisson structure, Poisson varieties, and uh, generically symplectic. Let me just see, let me just, at this point, require this, generically symplectic. And uh, so, and uh, well, Thesis also tell us something about this, and something is that this actually tell you explicitly what M H is, and M H is the following thing: it should be just M. Uh, well, let me. Uh, I was told that I'm supposed to write three slashes. Uh, this is this means Hamiltonian reduction by G. So it means that we write the moment map from mu from M to the dual of the Lie algebra of G, and what this thing is is just spec of uh, the following thing, you take functions on mu inverse of zero and then g invariance. And there are a lot of interesting varieties which appear in this way. For instance, all of these Nikajima Kubu varieties that, that I mentioned, uh, uh, they, do, uh, they do appear in this way. They, by definition, they kind of appear in such a form for some specific choice of g and m. So, so he, Uh, there what? There are many M's. The one you're taking Hamiltonian reduction of? Uh, yes. The yes, it's 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 this uh, it's this one. Well, I'm trying. Well, is it? Yeah, I mean, I hope that it's more or less clear that the home this. But yeah. okay. uh, now. About the Coulomb branch, uh, thesis know much less in principle. And what they tell you is that MC, for instance, what is its dimension? So, so note that dimension of this guy somehow depends very, very much on M. Uh, dimension of the Coulomb branch is always twice the rank of G. So, uh, uh, and uh, uh, well, and in fact, this thing is birational. Yeah? This is birational. Is isomorphic to the cotangent. Well, I mean, my notations may be not very nice, but so I don't know how to avoid that. So this is the notation here is that T in G is a maximal torus, and T check is its dual torus, and W is the wild group. So. Um, this thing is already a little bit singular, but usually they're even more singular. And so what thesis would tell you at this point is that this is the classical Coulomb branch, and, but, the, uh, but the actual quantum Coulomb branch is only birational isomorphic to this. And this is what they say that it means that the classical Coulomb branch acquires quantum corrections. <laughs> but the upshot of all this is that we're supposed to be able to construct some kind of canonical variety. Yes, and one other thing is that, of course, they have a lot of examples uh, when uh, they know the expected answer. Sorry, how does the branch depend on I didn't tell you. It's supposed to, right? It's, no, it's supposed to very heavily depend on them, but not, not up to the variational equivalence. I mean, so, uh, uh, so, uh, it's, it, so its dimension, for instance, does not depend on M at all. But actually, for instance, its singularities depend on M very heavily. So, uh, uh, and, uh, mm, uh, what star means here? Hmm? What's the T star? Uh, cotangent bundle. Oh. <laughs> well, I see, the problem is that uh, you can denote, I mean, usually you would denote the torus either by T or by H. So maybe at this point it would be nicer to denote it by H, but then uh, later a lot of cohomologies will appear, and so, so, the, uh, so the letter H somehow will, will become very bad. <laughs> so, and, and, and I have this problem for years, and I don't know how to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I try to do it on the blackboard, this is, uh, this is not going to lead us anywhere. <laughs> or whiteboard. Okay, so... Uh, and, uh, uh, well, and this thing should satisfy some properties. In fact, uh, so for instance, uh, 
Um, for instance, uh, 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 for instance, physics will tell you that uh, M C it should be smooth so to be actually symplectic, if and only if M H is a point. Well, in this, yes, in the, or more generally, somehow this thing should have. Uh, well, see that M H always has a conical structure, and this, uh, so it's so it's easy to see that M H is smooth if and only if it is a point. Uh, well, at least in this uh, uh, in this story, and uh, well, and you can actually strengthen this. So, for instance, these things are supposed to have finitely many symplectic leaves, and there should be some kind of order reversing bijection between symplectic leaves, or maybe symplectic leaves with some additional finite structure. So, let me not go into this right now. Uh, so, so physicists, uh, uh, physicists produced uh, many. Examples of MC for for a particular choice. Of GM, and uh, but not actually. I mean, m many, but not too many. So somehow in many, so uh, uh, so in many in many kind of very. Reasonable cases, it's, it's somehow was not known what this thing is, and so one of so the things that we actually so now I can say what what is actually done. What what is the first thing which is done in our papers is that uh, so in this BFN paper uh, papers, there's a kind of uh, rigorous mathematical definition of MC. In full, well, in full generality, by, where by full generality I mean this case, uh, for and uh, for m equal to cotangent bundle of n, uh, and plus uh, uh, many computations. So I think uh, many computations of the answer, so we can cover uh, everything which was done by thesis, and actually much more than that. So now let me uh, already at this point connect this a little bit to motivation number zero, and then I'm going to uh, pass to motivation number two, which was which is symplectic duality, and uh, and then maybe in the very very end of the talk I'll actually say what the construction is. Maybe I'll spend the last ten minutes of the talk. Uh, um, Yeah, maybe I should say one more thing at this stage is that uh, thesis also tell you that there are a lot of, that, that there's some kind of, this, there should be uh, some kind of interesting interplay between the geometry of this MH and geometry of MC, and which is sort of like mirror symmetry. Uh, and uh, uh, so there are many geometric properties, many, many things that, many kind of non-trivial things you can do on one side, you can go from the other side. And uh, so maybe before I, I go to the uh, example of, uh, that I want to uh, talk about, about quiver gauge theories, I want to say that not all interesting uh, 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 three-dimensional theories that I'm talking of the type I'm talking about should really come from a group and a representation. So for example, uh, physicists tell you uh, that, and this was uh, for many things this will be actually, a main motivational world will not fall into this realm, so physicists tell you that there should be there should exist gauge theory, well, I should, there should exist a theory, exist a Q of T. So let G be any, well, let's say G, let's say uh, Lie algebra be any uh, simple Lie algebra, but it will not have nothing to do with the gauge group. Uh, there should exist a Q, uh, quantum field theory such that uh, M, uh, Higgs is the is n of g, which is the nilpotent cone of g. Which is some kind of example of a singular symplectic variety. And actually, uh, very often, uh, this uh, Higgs and Coulomb branch will acquire some canonical, well, not canonical, will acquire some symplectic resolution. In this case, the nilpotent cone is known to have a symplectic resolution, which is the Springer Resolution, and the M Coulomb in this case is supposed to be the M G check, where G check is Langlois dual algebra. 
So unfortunately, this does not fall in general under the realm of theories I'm going to talk about in the end, unless G is of type A. Because uh, the way I see it is that uh, somehow if you look here, then you see that uh, uh, you'll be able to write uh, the Higgs branch. I mean, the theories that we're talking about only belong to the uh, 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 story when uh, the Higgs branch can be written as a Hamiltonian reduction of symplectic vector space. And, uh, and uh, you're definitely not expected to be able to do it for a nilpotent cone of any simple algebra, but if G is SLM, you can actually do it. And, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, somehow, I mean, we do know a little bit how to talk about the theory which sort of has these two properties. What is the representation? Uh, the first question you should ask is what is the group? <laughs> Absolutely not. So uh, uh, it's the product of all GLI where I runs from 1 to n minus 1. Well, you see, one property, is because this thing is self-dual, I told you that the dimension of the Coulomb branch should be twice the rank. So, it should be the, uh, so the rank of the, gauge, of the gauge group should be, uh, should be half the dimension of the, of the nilpotent Coulomb. So, uh, if, uh, so, so therefore, it cannot be SLN. So in fact, this is what I, uh, this is uh, some example I want to mention right now, and then I'm going to pass to, so then I'm going to abandon physics story, and I'm going to pass to symplectic duality story. Uh, and uh, the uh, example is what's called quiver gauge theories. And this is the following thing. Suppose that we have, let's yet Q be any, any graph. And let me just, again, because we're, not, we're doing something which is related to this n rather to m, uh, uh, let me uh, fix an orientation. And so let i, let's say, be a set of vertices. And then uh, to talk about the square gauge theory, we need to uh, fix two vectors. So we need to fix two vectors v and w, which lie in z greater or equal than zero to the power i. Then we, we can define this uh, uh, out of this data. We're supposed to be able to produce this uh, <coughs> gauge theory. So I'm going to produce the group and the representation right now. And uh, 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 so, <coughs> Mm, uh, in this case, the Higgs branch will be, by definition, the, the corresponding Kajim equivalent variety. And uh, uh, so, uh, let me tell you first of all what is G. G is going to be the product of all GL, VI, I, and I, and M uh, is. Um, um, uh, M is going to be the following. So M is going to be first of all summation over all edges of my graph. And here I write home from C to the VI to C to VJ plus summation just over all I and I home from C VI C W. So this group naturally acts here. Oh, sorry, this is n. This is not m. This is so n. Note that m n will be this thing plus its dual, and this will correspond to just taking this thing and adding the same things, but with opposite orientation of everything. So, so in fact, nothing depends on orientation, but uh, but somehow. Uh, so this thing is quiver gauge theory, and in this case, this uh, if you follow my definitions, then if you uh, uh, compute. Uh, the corresponding Higgs branch, we can denote it by M0 V W. The zero is that because without the zero, this, this kind of consists of the Kajima's notation, without the zero, it will be its resolution. This is singular space. And this is, well, one of the uh, versions of the Kajima equivalent variety. And this is a singular variety in general. And um, in uh, uh, Many cases, and somehow, uh, for some well, more or less explicit condition of V and W, you can construct a symplectic resolution of these things. 
which is which are also called which is uh, so this thing is defined by means of some Hamiltonian reduction and to construct a resolution you need to take a reduction in a slightly different sense instead of considering this kind of reduction you need to define some it also take the uh, premature of zero under the moment map then define some stable points there and then take the quotient of g of stable points by g. Uh, so and uh, the question is what is mc in this case and again to answer this question I'll have to give you a precise definition which I'll I promise to give towards the end. But the point is that to relate it to my motivation number zero, I should say that, I, I, uh, that uh, MC will be, uh, well, at least for some nice V in W. Uh, and yeah, and so Nakajima, so, so, uh, uh, so Nakajima produces uh, uh, weight spaces in, uh, so actually, sorry, let me say it a little later. So, um, uh, so okay, maybe let me say it, uh, one more thing now. So let GQ, So let Q be an ADE quiver, finite type, and GQ is the corresponding simple group. Then we can define two weights, lambda and mu, these are weights of uh, GQ. So lambda is going to be a summation uh, w i omega I, where so the vertices of, by definition vertices the, I mean this set i is the set of vertices of the Dinkin diagram of GQ and so we can write this uh, 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 the summation of the corresponding fundamental weights and uh, uh, mu is going to be lambda minus summation uh, v i alpha i this is the simple roots so this is fundamental weights this is the simple roots and uh, uh, so uh, assuming that, uh, so note that this is always dominant weight, uh, this is some weight, so, uh, so and from the, from sort of Nakajima's theory, the nice situation is when, uh, is when mu is a weight of uh, representation with highest weight lambda, so if mu is a weight, so if let's say v lambda mu is not equal to zero, where this is the representation of highest weight lambda and this is its weight space, then Nakajima constructs a resolution of um, well, a resolution M V W of M zero V W such that uh, v lambda mu is the middle cohomology of this resolution. And on the other hand, uh, somehow we can ask, uh, we can go here and ask what is the MC in this case and what I'm going to think that I'm going to formulate. So somehow I'm going to, MC in this case can be described in terms of, uh, MC can be, described in terms of the affine Grassmannian of the group GQ. And uh, then if you apply the corresponding geometric Sataki package to, to this answer, and uh, you will somehow see some relation that, uh, well, <laughs> if you, if, and if, if you apply geometric Sataki to this, uh, to this answer, you'll see that the same space can be constructed uh, both in terms of the geometry of the Higgs branch and in terms of the geometry of the Coulomb branch. And this turns out to be kind of general phenomenon, which has to do with symplectic duality, to which I'm going to pass right now. But uh, one thing that I want to say is that in the end of the day, I'm going to give you a rigorous definition of Coulomb branch in full generality. And in particular, in this case, I'll be able to produce for an answer what this thing is in terms of the fine grass of, of, the, of, this, of this group. Okay, so now again we can forget about everything, and, uh, and now I'm going to talk about symplectic duality. So, uh, any any questions? Yes. Well, okay.
Well, I mean, the first, point, the first question is, what is the Coulomb branch? <laughs> All right. Yeah, the, 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 this, is the main, this is the main, from the physics motivation part, this is the main question. Is what is the definition? <laughs> they just tell you some kind of vague properties of it and, and examples of calculations. And, uh, uh, and the question is, what, what, what is it? Well, okay, maybe this, uh, this uh, part two I'm going to talk about right now that will sort of tell you something about it because I'm going to talk about mm, sort of general notion of symplectic dual and uh, uh, particular examples of symplectic dual things will be this MC and MH. And this will be, so, so this, constru this construction of MC will be an example of some kind of fairly general situations which you can construct a symplectic dual. Yeah, I have no, no means to think about these words. And, and moduli of vacua and so on. And I guess that maybe like the, the point is that they, these notions, even though we're supposed to ignore them, the, the existence of such a theory is supposed to shed light on the objects that are being inputted. Well, I mean, so far, somehow, the only thing we can do is just sort of, you know, read physics papers, try to extract some mathematical statements from there. So I don't know how to think about the actual quantum field theory in this case in any way. So, not, not in terms of correlation functions, not just... Um, okay, maybe we'll, let's discuss it. Just to keep reading the papers. No, no, it's just, it's, just, it's just very stupid. So, they just give you examples and they just tell you, given a group of representation, you can construct some single symplectic variety. And sort of, they give you, and, and sort of, this is, it looks absolutely unsystematic. So, so they give, produce you, you give you examples of this thing. So, the question is, can you, can you make it systematic? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's enough as a motivation. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I don't have time to give you an, an example that we've kind of known before, maybe. The, because, I mean, okay, you know, let's discuss it afterwards. So let me talk about symplectic duality. So here, uh, as symplectic duality is going to be some kind of, it's going to be sort of like mirror symmetry. So, no, mirror symmetry somehow in the old days, some kind of uh, numerical, uh, it was kind of numerical statement. So somehow you say that somehow you have some manifold in smear dual and some kind of, you can extract uh, some numerical information about one from some kind of other numerical information the other. So in symplectic duality you can uh, do some similar stuff, uh, but also then mirror symmetry requires some kind of categorical formulation to the conservation. And here there's also categorical symplectic duality, uh, but uh, uh, which generalizes uh, Kazul duality for ordinary category O. And, but unfortunately, I, I won't have time to talk about this in great detail, so let me maybe spend 10 minutes talking about this. So here I'm going to make some assumptions which are much stronger than what you actually need, but it will be much easier for me to, uh, uh, to work under this much stronger assumptions. Uh, so I'm going to work with conical symplectic resolutions. And maybe I should quote at this stage Andrei Okonkov, who said, always says that conical symplectic resolutions are the Lie algebras of the 21st century. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll mention actually in a moment why. Uh, conical symplectic resolutions, so that means that we, ha we have the following data. We have x tilde over x, some map pi. So here x is an affine, let's say, normal Poisson. Uh, generically symplectic variety. And x tilde is a symplectic resolution. So in other words, it's a resolution so that if you pull back this form which is defined generically, then it extends everywhere in symplectic form. And conical means that there is a C star action uh, on everything, which dilates the symplectic form such that, <coughs> say, lambda of omega is equal to lambda star of omega is lambda times omega, or maybe lambda squared, let me put lambda squared times omega, uh, it doesn't matter, uh, C star action, and such which contracts. X, uh, X 
to some point to a point let's call zero x maybe zero x in x so example so uh, kind of Samson's main example is uh, what I have already mentioned. This is the Springer solution. Example. Springer resolution. And this is, so again, we have some Lie algebra, simple Lie algebra, take a snow pot and cone, and it has a uh, Springer resolution, which is the Cotian bundle to the corresponding flag variety. So, and contract x contracts x to one. Yes, there's one fixed point, and everything is contracted to this point. So it's kind of well. For instance, think of the important cone. No, I mean this. I mean, uh, okay, just take zero. So it means that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, and uh, so the idea is that uh, the observation. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, X on everything. Yes, yes, no, I mean, yeah, sure. Again, think about just uh, 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 important two by two matrices and the cotangent one to P1. Just uh, So. Now, uh, let me already mention the following things. That, uh, two things here are kind of a little bit restrictive, but somehow, uh, first of all, the conical condition is sometimes, well, we're actually going to do things which are more general than just conical condition. And what's uh, even more important, the existence of resolution is actually a very strong condition. And again, it will be easier for me to say things when there is a resolution now, but, uh, uh, and, uh, but somehow, in the right theory, the right theory should be sort of about just x and not about x tilde. But nonetheless, uh, observation is that such things often come in pairs. So somehow given some x tilde over x, somehow often you can construct some x tilde check over x check. And somehow there's some interplay between these two things. And so, for example, in this case, if this is x, then x check should be, as I mentioned, this ng check. And one thing is that, uh, in particular, again, resolution will not always exist, but at least in case when it exists, uh, somehow if this, for instance, will be Higgs branch of some theory, then this should be the Coulomb branch of some theory. But, uh, uh, so let me just say a little bit about what kind of uh, what sort of these two things have to, have to do with each other. So first of all, given the symplectic resolution, uh, you can construct two vector spaces out of it. So, uh, so given this x check over x, you can construct two fine dimensional vector spaces, ax and bx. And uh, uh, the claim is also that this vector space is canonically attached just to x and not to x tilde. Although the definition, at least of one of them, will use the resolution. And so AX is just the second cohomology of X tilde. But this is known, known not to depend on the resolution. So the, and in fact, uh, there's a work of Namikawa who constructs it even when there's no resolution. Uh, so, but let me not go into this. And this is, this is also known to be the base of some kind of universal symplectic deformation of X. And the uh, BX is the uh, 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 Lie algebra of maximal torus in the group of uh, simplectomorphisms of X, which are also known to be the same as simplectomorphisms of X tilde. Uh, uh, so example is the following, that uh, let's, look, let's look at this case. Uh, what, uh, what is H2 of the Springer resolution? This is the same, it's cotangent bundle flag variety, so it's the same as H2 of the flag variety. And so this is, so AX in this case is the uh, dual space to the Cartan subalgebra. And you can check that the group of symplectomorphisms in this case uh, of this thing is just your original G. And so BX is actually the Cartan subalgebra itself. So one, so, uh, okay, so property one,
property one is that ax check should be equal to bx and ax should be equal to bx check. So these two things should be interchanged. And so this example is actually somewhat misleading because in this example, uh, I mean, this is definitely true in this example, but in this example, these things sort of have more, I mean, this x and x check have more or less the, the same size. I mean, for instance, they have the same dimension. Uh, uh, and this is usually, that this, this will not be the case. Somehow usually we'll, it will be very far from there. Uh, so, okay. Now I said, that, so, so basically I said that this, uh, there's this, uh, quote from Okunkov that uh, symplectic resolutions are the Lee algebra of the 21st century. So somehow the claim is that, uh, so it's very well known that uh, more or less everything, or, all, or at least many things that non-trivial things you can do about representation theory of simple Lee algebra, so you can formulate in terms of the geometry of the Springer resolution. And so the, the point is that everything should be generalizable to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the case of arbitrary symplectic resolutions. And uh, so in particular, uh, so let me actually format this causal duality statement, which, which will not play, I, mean, I won't have time to explain what, what role it will play in my story, but, namely, but, I still, but I still think it's kind of worth to formulate this. So property two, this is kind of the casual, uh, so this is, uh, this is due to many people, I think Webster, uh, uh, proud food, I mean this kind of conjecture, proud food, uh, Braden, Licata and maybe other, other people too. So the point is that in this case, you're supposed to be, and, uh, uh, and actually there's some work of Bezrukhan and Kalejian which guarantees you this, they can construct canonical, actually family of canonical quantization to solve this thing. So uh, X, so I said that X is a fine, so there's an algebra, of, so, uh, so A, so AX is the algebra of functions on X. And so AX should acquire a canonical fam family of quantizations, a family of quantizations, quantizations, parameterized by elements of the space um, AX. So we, you know this quantization, so if we have lambda in A, so, well, let me just throw it right at all x. So, sorry, let me, this is just it's too difficult to distinguish curly A from not curly. So if you have lambda in AX, then we can denote by U lambda the corresponding quantization. And uh, 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 now uh, we can start also the corresponding uh, modules uh, over this. Yeah, and by the way, in the, in the case of the Springer resolution, these things will be quotients of the universal enveloping algebra by the central character. Now, the other thing you can do is that given, this is uh, slightly more difficult, but let me not go into this, given mu inside um, Bx, which is integral, and in some sense uh, regular, so this you have to explain what it means, but uh, let me not go into this, you can define Category O of representations of this thing you can define O lambda mu. This is category O of U lambda modules. Uh, and uh, uh, so, and the conjecture here is which is proved also in many cases now, is that on mu, well, I mean, I don't have time to explain this. I mean, basically, the way you can think about this, the usual category depends on the choice of Borel subalgebra, so, uh, which is kind of harmless, but in this case, it's become much less harmless. So somehow, mu sort of resists, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, mu, mu is sort of the choice, I mean, category means, means that some part uh, acts no potently, right? And so, uh, uh, and mu is actually, if it's integral, it's, 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 a, it's a core character inside, inside automorphisms of our x, which actually also acts by automorphisms on the quantization, and that, that allows you to sort of write some kind of triangular decomposition for, uh, for, for this thing. So, well, let me go, not go into this. So, the, the point is that when it sort of makes sense, this thing should be, is Kazul dual to, uh, 
uh, O, well, let me put OX here, and here I put OX check. Let me check lambda check. And uh, so, uh, uh, in particular, when you specialize to this example, this special, well, if you take the usual kind of regular block of category O, then it's known that actually for the group and for the dual, this category is O is the same. It's, there's a theorem of Zorgel which says that somehow this category only depends on the wild group. But uh, also there's a theorem of balance on Ginsburg and Zorgel which uh, says that this category is Kazul self-dual. So in particular, the category for G is actually, the canonical statement is actually the category for G is Kazul dual to the category for G check. And, uh, and this should be generalizable too more general story. And uh, now I don't have time to uh, proceed, but let me just say that property, well, kind of this is a bunch of property three. There's a kind of uh, a lot of numerical relation, numerical relation between various cohomologies on one side between some, between sort of, let me say, topology of X and X tilde and x check. So here, unfortunately, it will just take me some time to sort of, I mean, there's some list which can actually, you can actually derive this. And the reason I mention this, they can derive, uh, as with ordinary mirror symmetry, you can define all, you can derive all the numerical information from, uh, from this casual duality conjecture. So now, uh, okay, so now I have about probably eight minutes, right? So now I owe you two things. I owe you a, a construction. So, uh, yeah, and what I mentioned is that somehow this Higgs and Coulomb branches should be an example of the symplectic dual pairs. So, uh, so what I uh, sort of want to do briefly is to mention, first of all, the construction of MC, and second, maybe the answer in the, uh, in the finite quiver case. Let me first do the second thing, and then I'll spend maybe the last two minutes telling you what the, the idea of the construction. And, uh, and the construction is such that it's actually very well adjusted to proving this. And there's a recent paper by Webster who sort of did something slightly weaker than this, but closed. So uh, maybe now I said that somehow so I can use this. Uh, 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 so, uh, so now we, we we're in the quiver case. So we have Q again, AD quiver. And we have V in W. And the corresponding, and we think about them as corresponding pair of weights of the group GQ. And uh, uh, so again, so now I'm going to, so, so now in this case, this MC is supposed to be the symplectic dual, whatever it means, of M0 VW, which is the Nakajima quiver variety. And let me very briefly describe it, uh, and then again, so far it means nothing, but then uh, later I'm going to just, again, spend two or three minutes telling you what the, the, the actual definition of this symplectic dual or of MC. And then there will be a theorem, which is, will be actually quite trivial that this is actually the case, that what I'm going to, the answer I'm going to tell you is really the answer to, to the construction. Okay, so the construction is the following. So let me recall the story of the fine Grassmannian. So we have the, so let's G be, well, any reductive group. So uh, I'm going to specialize this GQ in a moment. Uh, so G reductive group. So then we can write the fine Grassmannian of G, which is G of T mod G of square brackets T. Which is some kind of infinite dimensional in scheme, and it's known that it has uh, that G of T orbits on the fine Grassmannian are fine dimensional, and they're in one to one correspondence with dominant uh, weights, uh, dominant co weights of G in one to one correspondence, lambda plus, which is dominant co weights. So we'll denote the corresponding orbit by GER G lambda. And they're finally dimensional. And it's known that, in fact, 
mu g, well, let me, see, let me suppress, g from notation lies inside the closure of Gur lambda. So the closure of H Gur lambda is a projective writing, in general singular, which has finitely many g of uh, g square brackets t orbits. So this thing uh, lies in the closure if and only if v lambda mu is not zero. And uh, 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 so now in this case, uh, one can construct, and again, I don't have time to explain how, one can construct canonical transversal slice which I denote by double lambda mu to gur mu inside the closure of gur lambda bar. And it's known to be singular symplectic. So you can construct, it's in the fine variety, you can construct a Poisson structure on it, and generically it will be symplectic variety. For instance, all ADE surface singularities arise in this way for some, for some particular cases. Um, okay, so now let me assume here that, uh, so uh, I mean I said that V and W corresponds to some pair of lambda and mu, let me assume for simplicity, you can actually produce the answer always, but let me assume for simplicity that mu is also dominant then. True? Then, uh, uh, so maybe let me put also G into the notation here. So then the claim is that uh, MC in this case of sort of VW is going to be equal to W lambda mu GQ. That's kind of statement number one. And one thing which comes from geometric satake is that if I consider the intersection cohomology of this W lambda mu, then its total dimension is equal to the dimension of the corresponding weight space. So somehow there's no canonical isomorphism in the, between the things. You have to need, need to modify a little bit the right hand, right hand side, but again, I don't have time to explain how. But you can actually modify the right hand side a little bit uh, so that you get a canonical isomorphism. And in fact, this modification does play a very important role in this general symplectic duality story. But I don't have, I only have four minutes, so I don't have time to explain this. But uh, uh, with the right modification, but so roughly speaking, intersection cohomology of this thing is the weight space, but actually, uh, 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 but actually some kind of slightly twisted version of it is canonically the weight space. And so we see that, the but roughly speaking, we get that the intersection cohomology of the symplectic dual is equal to the middle cohomology of the resolution. And this is actually going to be very, this is general phenomenon, this is going to be always the case for the symplectic duality. So this is one of those numerical consequences you can derive from this uh, categorical statement. Okay. So this was kind of the thing that, uh, so I mean, again, I haven't given you the definition, but, uh, 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 but if I give a definition, the statement will be, so this is actually a theorem. And this is, uh, this is a actually a pretty non-trivial theorem, but it will become a theorem once I give you a definition. So now I have three and a half minutes, actually three minutes, and I'll, I'll give you the definition. So now again, we forget about everything. And uh, I'm just starting with a group G, which is a reductive group in N, which is a representation. And I want to construct some affine variety, which will be actually single symplectic, so Poisson. So I'm going to construct a, well, first of all, it will, it will be an affine variety. So I'm going to construct some A, G, N, which will be some commutative algebra. But in fact, it will be Poisson algebra. And the reason it will be Poisson is that it, it will come with the canonical quantization. Uh, so the, 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 the Poisson structure will be actually derived from the quantization. Uh, so, okay, so, so I want to construct this algebra, so example is the following. So let n be equal to zero. Uh, so uh, in this case, well, I can tell you just what the answer is, but uh, 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 before I tell you the answer, let me tell you the construction. The construction is going to be the following. Let's consider the same affine Grassmannian of G. And let's consider its homology equivalent under G, well, uh, well, okay, so if I want to follow my notation, well, let me still introduce this notation. O will be just C of T, so let me just put this G of O here. This is equivariant homology. 
Now, this is kind of formally the same as, uh, so if I put k to be c of t, this is formally the same as the homology of g of k mod g of o, g of o. And if you have a homology of, you know, group uh, modular, the uh, same subgroup on both left and the right, then this thing requires an algebra structure by means of convolution. So this is an algebra under convolution. And this will be just a special case of our construction. Now, in this case, the answer was known for about 10 years, and it, it is due to the and of Finkelberg. In this case, this algebra A, well, let's call it A, in this case, A is the, uh, well, spec A, if you want, is the, uh, what's called the universal centralizer. In G check, so it's, uh, it's uh, the space of, up, you can format it in terms of cost and slice, but up to, uh, if, if you're willing to say things up to conjugation, that up to conjugation is the same as the space of, so it's the space of pairs X in G check regular element, but not necessarily regular semi-simple, regular in G in G check, such that uh, uh, G X G inverse is equal to X, uh, up to conjugation. Yes, this algebra is commutative algebra. But you want something which is not, so you want to quantize it? Well, <coughs> okay, I'll say, uh, uh, just I'll spend the last 10 seconds saying, saying how to quantize it. So, and, uh, no, well, actually I can say it now. So the point is that there's one more thing which acts on this, uh, on this stuff, namely there's a cease direction which rotates the variable t by loop rotation. If you include that, if you consider everything equivalent also with respect to the c star, then this algebra becomes non-commutative. And this, this becomes a kind of one parameter deformation with non commutative one parameter deformation of this algebra, and this is the quantization. Well, it's not the couple, no, it's the convolution. It's, it, has, it has to do, the multiplication has to do with multiplication on the group, on the group G of K. Yeah, but they also have the couple, so it uh, No, it doesn't have the cup product because. Uh, uh, no, I mean, it is sort of a Hopf algebra, but yeah, I mean, because, you know, the centralizer of each particular element. So it is a Hopf algebra over, over the base. So the base consists of a uh, conjugate class of regular elements in the Lie algebra, which is the same as the adjoint quotient of the Lie algebra. And uh, so, uh, so over that, it is a Hopf algebra because just the thing is a group over, I mean, just the centralizer of any element is a group. So over that base, it is a... Okay, now I'm, I have... Uh, exactly zero uh, means, but let me spend maybe one more minute just telling you what the definition is. So now we just given G and N, one can define the following stack as G N, which consists of the following pairs. And the claim is that the construction I'm going to tell you now is when in case when N is equal to zero, it really reduces to what I said over there. Uh, it's a space of the following quadruples, P1, P2, uh, kappa, phi where P1, P2 uh, <coughs> principal G bundles on the formal disk. Uh, kappa is an isomorphism between P1 and P2 on D star, which is spec of K. And if I stop here, I will uh, then uh, the corresponding stack will be just exactly this double quotient. So if, uh, but, if, but I also have my representation N, and for my representation N, I take the following. So phi is an element in the following thing. So I take uh, the sections. So if I have a principal G bundle, I can and I have a representation of G, I can uh, construct the corresponding associated vector, bu as a vector bundle. So this, this, is what it, this is the corresponding uh, vector bundle constructed from N. And, uh, sorry, I should take D here. And I take the corresponding associate uh, vector bundle. And uh, now I can do the same thing for, uh, for P2. And for, but the point is that these things are identified when, when already when they're restricted to the, four, to the punctured disk. So therefore, it makes sense to say that phi lies in the intersection. So. It's, if you wish, it's a pair of sections of this and this, but such that on the, on the formal puncture, this, they're the same. And so now the end of, will be, end of my talk, is that one can define, can define 
actually Borel Moore homology. So here it's important that we take Borel Moore homology, which again, I don't have time to explain. I mean, things are a little bit infinite dimensional here, but not terribly infinite dimensional of this stack SGM. And it will acquire, it will acquire and, and, uh, uh, and uh, so this H star Borel Moore of SGN, and it will have a multiplication, and the multiplication will be sort of, well, a generalization of convolution here. And we'll have a convolution product. And so the definition, we define A, G, N to be this barrel more homology. And M, C is its spec. And then you can probably believe me that this theorem becomes non-trivial. <laughs> but, uh, but it is a theorem. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we can prove that in general, for instance, the salvage result is finitely generated, and the corresponding MC is always a normal variety, for instance, and it comes with the canonical quantization, uh, uh, and the canonical quantization comes from considering things equivalent with respect to loop rotation, and so on. Uh, so, and it actually comes with a lot of other structures which I don't have time to talk about. And so let me finish by saying that as I said, there is a recent work of Webster who almost proves, but well, not quite, but in some generality, he, all, he uses this construction to almost prove this kind of categorical uh, 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 symplectic duality uh, given by this construction for a pair of symplectic dual given by this construction. And if one pushes this a little bit further, then one gets really kind of, and this is probably this will probably happen very soon, and one gets really this kind of a priori identification between Nakajima's construction and the geometric Satagi construction of uh, fine dimensional representations, which, which is what I started with. So you can actually really put it into some general realm. Oh, whoa, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Okay, N is the representation. I mean, as any representation. So, no, I mean, we wanted to construct something starting from a group in the representation. But, I mean, what I should say is that the actual constructions really depend, there should be a much better construction which starts from a group in the symplectic representation. And this has to do with the story of uh, what's called Mativic Donaldson and Thomas invariance. But I don't have time to talk about that, so, uh, so let me stop now. No, I mean, which, you know, this is here, G is annual reduction. So already the case of torus is quite interesting. So in case of torus, I can actually formulate the answer pretty. So in the case of torus, you get both Higgs and Coulomb branch are actually some hypertoric varieties, which are given by some explicit combinatorial data. And in case, so in case of torus, you can actually, I mean, it looks like completely tri something completely trivial because they find Grassmannian for a torus, just a bunch of points. But this algebra is actually, for general representation of a torus, it's quite non-trivial algebra. So for instance, let me maybe just give you one example, is that if you take, if you, if you G is C star, and your representation N is just kth power of standard character, so just uh, N is just one dimensional, just Z goes to Z to the power K. Then this, in this case, this MC is the AK surface singularity, so it's the surface uh, UV equal to W to the power K. So we see that, first of all, it is singular. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, all, so just from the fine grass manual of C star, which is, looks like an absolute trivial thing, we can actually cook up the surface. And, uh, and moreover, we can even cook up its quantization if we consider things equivalent to respect to loop rotation. And also, for example, uh, yeah, okay. Well, just, just. Well, I don't know what interesting means, so somehow... Uh, no, you see, for instance... Okay, so here is an example of an interesting question. So, so here I kind of, well, almost describe for the answer in the case of quiver theories of finite type. You can also consider quiver theories of a fine type. 
and the Kashima theory works there perfectly, I mean, without any, without any. And uh, that means that we should get some kind of analog of its transversal slices in the fine case. And in fact, uh, uh, and related to this work somehow about 10 years ago, Finkelberg and I had some kind of papers where this was conjecturally constructed. So, so, so in fact, so there you can actually form the conjecture that somehow we actually know what the answer is supposed to be in the fine case as well. But in the fine case, I don't know how to prove it. So the construction is also by just considering a spec of some kind of homology algebra. And, uh, and this will have to do with some kind of all index spaces of some surfaces. And, uh, uh, and I don't know how to prove this answer. In general, I don't know. I mean, in principle, uh, so uh, one question, again, the thing which is kind of interesting for symplectic duality, it, at least which is definitely necessary for this categorical symplectic duality, is the conical structure. And the conical structure, this will not, you won't always have it, so this is a condition, this is some condition on representation n. So for instance, when if n is equal to zero, uh, you will, it, will never, it will never be satisfied. <laughs> so uh, in physicists call such theory good or ugly. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so it, it's some numerical condition n, some very explicit numerical condition n, which guarantees that the corresponding uh, uh, Coulomb branch is, uh, is conical. And in this case, I think that if it is conical, you should get, definitely get something interesting. I mean, you should get some kind of interesting, kind of, well, not the consequence. So you should get some interesting casual duality statement. You're, you're, you're going to get some family of non commutative algebras on both sides and, and somehow. Uh, and the categories all should be casual dual, which is kind of, and which I said is almost proved. <laughs>